Bo e kabo e kabo e kabo ni biki biti e timbo wa inu mi du lati ri mi she ni du lati ri mi e kabo si e toto ni mu fe ke so biti e timbo wa biti e ti tara komo wa le mi e fi si nu comment section ni biti biti e timbo wa ni biti e ti tara komo wa le mi e kabo inu mi du lati ri mi welcome 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 guys I'm so excited to see you. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you for taking time out, out of your time to join this live session. Just a quick recap on what we discussed last week. We discussed about the benefits of teaching our children the Yoruba language. Last week, we discussed the benefits of teaching our children the Yoruba language. Just a quick recap on that. We talked about the identity we give them as um, as Yoruba children. We talked about the community we're giving to them, the connection. We talked about the employment opportunity. We talked about not having regrets. We talked about the language not dying with us. So I'm sure that by now you've known your why, you know the reason why you are a reason. You need to know the reason. It's been said that if the purpose of the thing is not known, abuse is inevitable. So if you have a purpose and you know the purpose, you're able to teach your children the Yoruba language. So today we're talking about the five mistakes, the biggest mistake parents make that hinder their children from learning the Yoruba language and how to avoid them. So our topic today is talking about the mistakes we make as parents. There are so many things we do as parents that affect our children. So today we'll be digging into those things to know the things we need to do to avoid these mistakes. Okay, the first thing we do as parents is that we have this thinking that once I, when I, speak, once I speak Yoruba to my children, they automatically learn how to speak Yoruba, which is not true. We have this notion that once I'm speaking Yoruba around my children, once I speak Yoruba around them, they will pick this Yoruba up someday. They will pick it up naturally. And I've come to tell you that that is a big mistake I've seen parents make. The children may not learn that language at all. It is not automatic. It is not automatic. And this is one of the reasons why I started this Yoruba Nimi parents live session, because this is like my story. I remember growing up, my parents are from the same tribe and they speak their dialect. They have a particular beautiful dialect that they speak. They speak this dialect to themselves and they speak to us. But because we are around, that doesn't mean we're going to pick it. My siblings and I never picked the language. To today, my siblings and I cannot speak that language. So, this is to tell you that you are speaking Yoruba around your children without making a definite effort to have them speak that language. They will not speak it. It is not automatic that they will pick up that language. It is not. So there's a need for you to be deliberate. That if you are speaking Yoruba to your children, you must be deliberate to have them know this Yoruba and have them speak it. So it's not automatic. I've seen parents say, oh, because I speak Yoruba around my children, my husband and I speak Yoruba, my children are going to pick it up naturally. No, that's the first mistake we make. It does not happen automatically. You have to put great effort into it. Having said that, the second mistake I see parents or people make is allowing their children to respond to them in English. Allowing your children to respond to you in English. That is a big mistake. And if you are here, you allow your children to speak to you in English. You can just put it in the comment section. My children speak to me in English. My children speak to me in English. Or you put Amy, Amy, Amy. As parents, you must allow them, you must create an avenue for them to use this Yoruba language. If you don't give them the avenue, they will not speak the Yoruba language. For instance, your children come to me and say, Mommy, I want. I want orange juice. Or mommy, I want water. There's a need for you to tell the child, no, sunny Yoruba, sunny Yoruba. If you allow your children to keep speaking English to you, they will become passive bilingual, passive Yoruba learner. They will understand what you are saying, 
but they will not be able to say it back to you. So the second mistake I see people make is allowing their children to speak English to them. You must put your foot on, on ground and say, no, enough is enough of speaking English. There's a need for you to speak Yoruba to me. You must create an avenue. You must create a need for them to speak Yoruba to you. If your children are always speaking English to you, in response to your Yoruba, for instance, they say, ah, and say, Choti John, yes, mommy. No, Benima. So if you continue allowing them to say, yes, mommy, when you speak Yoruba to them and they respond to you in English, they will become passive learners. They will never, they will never learn how to speak Yoruba. And that is my story. I can, my parents allowed me to speak English or Yoruba to them. So I didn't learn my, my dialect. And that's why I started this Yoruba, Yoruba parents session. That there's a need for us to know the mistakes we make when teaching our children and how to avoid those mistakes. So the first one, we've talked about the, the thinking that our children will learn Yoruba because they speak Yoruba than them. The second one is allow your children to respond to you in English. That is a big mistake. You must create an avenue, you must create a need for them to always respond to you in Yoruba. If they don't know what this, to say in Yoruba, there's a need for you to tell them that word in Yoruba and have them repeat it to you. For instance, mommy, what, do we, what are we eating this night? They come to meet you, mommy, what are we eating this night? What are we having for dinner? Okay, what's the phone I saw Yoruba. I'm on the Wani, okay, mommy, kill a fair day, me a lay. Mommy, kill a fair day, me a lay. So the children will have to say it back to you. Okay, oh yeah, I to saw, as of one, yeah, I to saw. Mommy, kill a fair day, me a lay. So once they say that, they know that anytime they want to ask about food, is mommy, kill a fair day, me a lay. Mommy, kill a fair day, bye. Mommy, kill a fair day, lost. Mommy, kill a fair day, lale. So anytime they come to you and they respond in English, Stop, pause, take a deep breath, and tell them to say it in Yoruba. You speak it to them in Yoruba. Say exactly what it is they want to, they, they spoke to you in English. Say it to them in Yoruba, and have them say it back to you. Have them say it back to you like two times. Like your children come and say, mommy, uh, mufe, uh, mommy, I want water. You say, no, mommy, mufe, omi. Oh, yeah, so, mommy, mufe, omi. So the next time your child says that, you tell him, no, I've corrected you on this. So, oh my God, I lost so, you will buy a but so. But if you keep allowing them to they will speak English to you, they will not learn how to speak Yoruba. The third one is, I see parents making excuses for their children. Research has shown us that children can learn at any level, at any stage, they can, you know, they can learn so many languages. So, Maria, oh, bit of prayer, I'm mommy, you go Yoruba, I mean, if I confuse I don't want to confuse my son. I don't want to confuse my daughter. And I'm like, no, children are, they are, their brains are wired to know so many languages at the same time. I remember when we were growing up, you know, we, we, we could speak Yoruba, we could speak English, we could even speak our dialect if we were exposed to it. So there was no confusion. We know how to switch. Our, our brains know how to, to work through all the different languages we have. So do you ever think your children doesn't know how to speak Yoruba or that they will be confused because you teach them another language? No. Instead, their brain will be developed in, a, in such a way that it gives them a bigger capacity. So stop making excuses for your children. They can learn whatever language you, you expose them to at that very young age. I've seen people saying that my children cannot learn Yoruba at this stage. I didn't start early. Yes, you didn't start early, fine. But every time you start, it's your time, it's your morning. I want to give an illustration. Imagine that you as the parent, they give you a job in Brazil. And they say, oh, Brazil says, come to Brazil in, let's say in November. But between now and November, they give you your own package and say, oh, you have to learn um, Portuguese. Within two months, you have to learn Portuguese. But if you come, this is the offer for your job, $20,000 per month, all expenses paid trips, you know, from Nigeria to wherever, to, to Brazil, from whatever country to Brazil, 
all expenses paid for you, your family, your husband, and your children. And you have a driver in Brazil. You have a, a duplex, you know, with pool, with gardens. You know, we have servants, stewards, all at your beck and call. But the only condition is that you must be able to speak Portuguese. And you have two months to learn Portuguese. Everybody in your family must be able to learn Portuguese. Your, yourself, your wife, your children, maybe your husband or your children. Everybody in your family must be able to learn Portuguese. And there's $20,000 every month on the table. With the driver, with you know, all expenses paid trip, holidays and all that. Will you learn this language within two months? And you've never spoken Portuguese. None of your children can speak Portuguese, but you have two months to speak Portuguese. So when we say that our children cannot learn at a particular age, I don't think so. Children can learn whatever uh, language we expose them to. So if with the right motivation, I know children can learn. With the right motivation, they can learn any language, including Yoruba. So if you teach your children and say, oh, this is the motivation for you. I want you to be able to learn this language. They will not be confused and they will learn it. Whatever age whatever they are, they will learn that language. I will say that the number four mistake I see people make is negative advice stroke mindset. Negative advice stroke mindset. I see people saying that, ah, I need a village to teach my children, especially when you are in a country where you don't have support system, like you are outside the country, you don't have people talking to your children in Yoruba, you don't have neighbors that are Yoruba speakers, you don't have um, maybe church that they speak Yoruba, or even anywhere you are, you don't have people like the, so many Yoruba speakers there. You say, ah, I need so many people to teach my children Yoruba. No, that is one of the wrong mindsets we have. I'm a Christian, so I take my, my philosophies from the Bible. There was no record that Moses was, Moses had any contact any, any other person apart from his mom. And his mom taught him all the Jewish laws. He taught him what to do and what not to do. He was exposed to two, to two cultures, the, the Jewish and the, and the Egyptian, the Egyptian uh, culture. And was able to develop in both ways. So you don't need a community to teach your children. Just you can teach your children the Yoruba language. Just you can teach your children the Yoruba language. So you don't need community to get in to get on board. You don't need community to teach your children to speak the Yoruba language. Just you can teach your children the Yoruba language. So if you say you need community, no, it's not. Just that determined that I want to teach my children. You can teach your children. I've seen places where the other speaks another language, the wife speaks another language, and the children learn languages from both parents, even in, an, in, in a foreign land. And I've seen parents say that, oh, they make excuses for their children, they have negative mindset that my children will not be, should be fled in one language before learning the second. That is the mindset we have that, ah, my child should be fluent in English before my child can speak Yoruba or before my child will learn, will start learning to speak Yoruba. No, the earlier you start, the better. Growing up, we're not fluent in one. We just grew up speaking Yoruba. We were spoken in our community, our parents spoke to us. And you know, we learned the other one in English and we're learning the two simultaneously. So as we're learning Yoruba, we're learning English. Learning Yoruba, even in Yoruba and English in school, you know? So there's no point saying that you want your child to be fluent in one language before you can introduce the second language, which is Yoruba to your child. They can learn the two at the same time if you are committed to it. If you are committed to say, oh, I want my children to learn and I'm willing to let them learn this language. This, the, the fifth uh, mistake I see parents make is not being consistent. Oh, today I start in January. I say, oh, I want to teach my children to speak the Yoruba language. I start in January. By middle of January, you say, ah, this is hard. And you stop. Or today you speak Yoruba to them, tomorrow you don't speak Yoruba to them. There's no way they're going to learn. You have to be consistent. And that's why I started with our why. There's a need for us to know our why. 
if you know our wife, we can help our children to know their own wife, where they must learn Yoruba. So um, another thing I see is expecting too much from these children. You just taught them for only one month, and you want them to be speaking in Yoruba, you learned over 12 years. You cannot remember that we were in school for almost 12 years. Elementary school, you know, the, prim the primary school, we learned how to speak Yoruba there. Yoruba was taught to us in our schools. We learned Yoruba in school, the primary school learned Yoruba. Going to the high school, the, the secondary school, as we know it, we learned Yoruba for another six years. So it took us like 12 years to learn Yoruba. You've only taught your child for one month, and you want them to be vast in that Yoruba uh, language. It is not possible. Give them time. Every good thing takes time. Every good thing takes time. So start by teaching them and be consistent, be patient with them. And it takes hard work. You have to be diligent and committed. You know, you can't take that away from it. If you want to learn any language, you have to be committed. Today, the children will speak. Tomorrow, they may not want to speak. You have to be consistent. You have to be patient with them. You have to be committed and say, oh, we have to learn this Yoruba language. And all of us, all of us are learning it at the same time. And we will, we're going to be better off for it. So today now we'll be able to talk about five, five mistakes parents make. As I do a recap, the first one is thinking that your children will automatically speak the Yoruba language because you speak Yoruba language around them. And this has been said that the need for you to make sure the children are involved in what you are saying. The second one is Allow your children to respond to you in English. That is the second mistake. You must stop that. You must allow your children to speak to you in Yoruba. Create avenues, create need for them to speak this Yoruba language. The third one is making excuses for your children. Your children are much more than what you give them credit for. They can learn so much more than what you give them credit for. So let them learn. They are willing to learn and they are able to learn. The fourth mistake we make as parents is having negative mindset or taking negative advice from people. You say, ah, this is too hard. You cannot do it. Don't even bother yourself. I've seen people that their children are born in America and their children speak Yoruba fluently. Not even Yoruba, that's all. Ijile. When you Yoruba, talk about Ijile, Ijile Yoruba. All war. The call room, all war. Not even in All war. You know? So you see people that are giving their children the opportunity to learn and their children have learned. The, the fifth one is inconsistency. Not being consistent, not being patient with our children, expecting them to learn this language overnight. It is not possible. Give them time. Every good thing takes time. Every good thing takes time. Allow them to learn and we'll be glad that they learn. Okay, so we've um, come to the end of this live session. Today we discussed about the mistakes parents make in teaching their children in Yoruba. There are five mistakes we've talked about. Thinking that your children will pick up the language automatically. Allow your children to respond to you in English. is a big mistake that most of us do. The third one is making excuses for our children. Uh, they are too young, they are too old, they cannot learn at this time. Which I say with the right motivation, your children will learn. The fourth mistake we make is neg having negative advice from people, negative mindset. They cannot do it. I cannot do it. Whatever you set your mind to, you can do it. If you believe that you can teach your children wherever they are, they can learn. And the fifth one is not being consistent and expecting so much from these children within a short time. Let's give them time. We spent over 12 years learning Yoruba. We learned Yoruba in school, in the elementary school, the primary school for six years. We learned Yoruba even in our high schools, the secondary school for another six years. So please give your children the opportunity to learn by being patient with them. They will learn. It's a language they're not used to with little or no resources. They will learn. But if you don't know where to start from, that's what we call in the Yoruba Nimi school. If you don't know where to start from, we have a curriculum that we programs to take children from not speaking Yoruba to conversational fluency where children know what to say, the actual what to use in the bathroom, how to say something in the kitchen, 
the mealtime conversation, you know what, how to say when they're outside, how to say about the weather, all this has been, has been coupled together to form a curriculum that your children can learn Yoruba easy. The course is called Yoruba Speaking Made Easy. So if you want your children to learn and you don't know where to learn from, this is a good opportunity for them. This is a good avenue for you to learn, to, for your children to learn. You, to be, you, you see the course, you can explain more, you can tell them about it. Oh, this is all we used to do when we were growing up. And to, together, you and your children will learn and get better at it. Thank you everyone for watching today's uh, live session. I'm grateful for you joining us. Thank you so much. I didn't take that for granted. But before we go, Amako Oriwa, Yorubani Mi, Yorubani Ye, Yorubani Wa, I no Mi Do, Me, Yorubani Mi, Eh, Yorubani Mi, Yorubani Ye, Yorubani Wa, I no Mi Do, Me, Yorubani Mi, Oh, double.